Hi everyone, I'm Max. Welcome to Toysmith Flutter, where every month we share supercharged insights for your retail business and spotlight a curated list of best-selling toys and gifts for your shopping list. In our last edition, Sarah Gerard joined us to explain how your social media posts can be prepped to go viral with just a few tweaks. We also visited Old Forge Hardware and learned how new technologies have led to a business renaissance at a century-old store. This month, we'll learn how popular fidgets and stem toys are serious tools for our autistic communities, and a small-town university bookstore will demonstrate how kid-focused events can contribute not only to sales, but to a greater sense of community. First up, fidgets. With their recent prevalence in our shops, it's easy to forget that they are much more than just toys. We sat down with Jillian Nelson at the Autism Society of Minnesota, who shared the therapeutic side of fidgets and how you can strengthen your stem aisle to better serve the autistic community. I'm Jillian Nelson. I'm the community resource and policy advocate and the curator of our awesome shop. Our awesome shop is curated as a way to serve our community and provide them with the best products and resources and tools to improve the lives of people living with autism in Minnesota and all over the country. So when we were all growing up, we all learned from the big yellow bird on a very famous street that we all have five senses. And we're familiar with all of those, the touch, taste, sight, hearing, and smell. Um, but there's also three other senses, and that's the proprioceptive, vestibular, and interoceptive. When one of our sensory systems, whether it's touch or taste or sight or proprioceptive or vestibular, is out of whack, it kind of, it can impact all our sensory systems. So keeping that really balanced with proactive sensory input and also um, proactively avoiding negative sensory input is really important for um, keeping a system running really well. Um, and that's where fidgets come in as tools more than toys. It's, it, it's a good way to proactively provide that body with that necessary sensation to regulate the system and keep everything balanced. If I'm sitting in a meeting and I notice that um, noises are getting really sensitive and I'm having a hard time screening out outside noises, it means that I probably need some sort of sensory input to regulate my system. Because sometimes the thing that becomes the challenge isn't the thing that needs regulating. So I obviously can't um, put on noise canceling headphones. So I might find other things like, um, like I have a glitter wand here with me. Um, this is a great thing that can like provide a lot of visual input. So it's something else that my brain can focus on and I can get that sensory input, which can help lessen the challenge of the thing that's not working, which in that scenario would be like the noises. We have always carried thinking putty. We have always carried glitter wands. We will always carry pop tubes, the ooze tubes, the drippy things. We always like to have something that challenges the brain. Um, so whether it's things like puzzles, like Rubik's cubes, or um, we have the Shishibo cubes right now. Um, we always like to have something that really kind of, you have to think about and solve. Um, this, this is one of my favorite fidgets So this year, and, and it, it's, it's a toy smith. It's my fainting goat. Um, it, he's supposed to just be fun. He's supposed to be funny. Like he, you push the button underneath and he drops, right? But what people don't realize is that deep pressure of pushing the butt button, this is proprioceptive feedback. Like having a stress ball of different textures, squeezing that is proprioceptive feedback. Um, slime and putties are super trendy right now, but that pulling, that squishing, all of that is proprioceptive feedback. Um, we actually carry a whole line of cat themed fidgets um, because we hear a lot from our adult community how much they love their cats. So it's a lot cooler to carry around a stress ball if it's a cat in an astronaut costume than if it's just a stress ball, right? So like having that really wide variety of tools find, allows someone to find what works best for them, what brings them joy, what brings them regulation, what just makes them happy. My biggest dream would be to walk into small retailers and see their fidget displays 
with recognition that these tools, that these toys or tools were designed to meet sensory input. So like having like a sign that says, um, like with a color coded key, like visual, tactile, auditory, and like maybe on the package or the display, you have a sticker that's like orange, yellow, and green. And now I know that that tool meets visual and tactile and audio input because it, it, it's not just about, okay, here, now this is an easy shopping explanation for someone who needs the tool, but it also reminds people that are choosing fidgets for fun that these, these items have a purpose and they were designed to meet needs of people with sensory issues. So it normalizes the use of fidgets for sensory issues rather than it just being an entertainment factor. Um, I think the best advice I would have for retailers on what not to do is if your local disability community comes to you and says, hey, we noticed you're doing this to support the disability community or the autism community, and we don't like it because of this. If, if you get that feedback from the community, it's really important that you listen to the community and not assume that as a shop owner or a parent or a community member that you know better than the people that you're attempting to serve when they're telling you that this isn't working or this is harmful. Well, a great place to start is visiting the Autism Society of Minnesota website. Um, we have a lot of tools to help people understand sensory input and sensory diets. Um, we even have a planning tool within our um, community built engagement um, program that helps people plan a sensory diet. Um, we are also not the only autism society in the country. There's also the Autism Society of America and many other affiliates that are in many other communities around the country. Um, connecting with your local autism community is always a great place to start. And no matter where you are in this country or in this world, I promise you have an autism community right around you. A big thank you to Jillian and the Awesome Shop. You can go online to ausm.org for more resources, education, and events at the Autism Society of Minnesota. Next, we're traveling to the little town of Hamilton, New York, home of Colgate University. There, we'll discover how their university bookstore offers students and the greater community much more than just textbooks. My name is Lisa Kenyon, and I'm a customer service specialist here at the Colgate Bookstore. We are the official bookstore for the college, but we also serve the community. We've been off campus since I believe 2020. It kind of comes across as we are the anchor store for downtown Hamilton. A lot of people initially have the perspective that the Colgate Bookstore is just for Colgate students until they come in and they see our children's corner. And of course we have all the trade books and then we have a gift wing. We sponsor a lot of events, a lot of children's events. Uh, prior to the pandemic, we had children's events at least monthly. And that not only brought in people from our local community, but from all around, thanks to all the promotion on social media. One of our biggest events was uh, Frozen, the Disney movie. We had two of the Disney princesses from Frozen uh, come and read to the children. What we didn't expect to happen, normally that gets about 40 people in attendance, children and their parents. Uh, we had probably well over 200. We looked out the windows and we just saw princesses all over the village. When we saw what was happening, we made some phone calls. The Palace Theaters next door got the princesses mic'd up on stage and basically got everyone over there to enjoy the event a little bit more um, comfortably than they could here. We were prepared for it to be pretty successful. We had a lot of frozen products here. And you know, we do them with other traditional books too. Interestingly enough, food authors bring in a lot of children as well. And I mean like 10, 12 year old children. Most of the questions that I noticed the children ask are about some of the dishes they've prepared in their online competitions or, you know, or the other chefs. There was a woman here three years ago. She was fantastic with the kids as well. 
they typically prepare something to serve. I've eaten food from Chef Jet. He's been here and cooked all, made all this sushi for us. And it was incredible. There's definitely passion behind cookbooks and cooking and cooking shows. And a few years ago, we had maybe 20 kids here that um, were given so many ingredients and had to create something. And then it was judged. I wasn't in the room, but I heard it got extremely competitive. Um, we got a lot of feedback afterwards, like they wanted us to do it again. They just indicated to us though that food is a big deal. We happen to have great recall with these kids. I remember when they come in and they are on the tour. They're looking at Colgate, they're looking at Cornell, they're looking at Syracuse. And I engage with them and their parents. I find, try to find out where they're from, where Colgate falls into their choices. Then when they ultimately get accepted, they come back for accepted students day. And I work hard to recall some of these kids as, mu as much as I possibly can and see it all the way through to graduation day. When I say to their parents, remember when I met you guys the very first time? And I'm gonna cry, cause it still, it always gets me. And they say to me, yeah, you were part of the difference that made us choose a school. Um, and they come in and they tell us that. And it's not just me, there's other people that work here that we love these kids so much and we like to take care of them, they're like our own. Um, and I think that kind of, uh, goes off into the community, whereas these kids know that everyone that works here, that works in a store across the street, feels that way about them as well, and their parents do. That is the beauty of going to school in a small town like this. Thanks, Lisa. You can load up on all your Colgate swag at colgatebookstore.com or visit facebook.com slash colgatebookstore for all their upcoming events. And now, it's time for Kendra to tell us what top five products should be at the top of your shopping list this month. Kendra, take it away. Fun in the Sun continues with backyard cookouts and family reunions. So party hosts will be looking for a great outdoor activity. Get Outside Go's Spring and Score hits the mark. A delightful mashup of classic party games. Players bounce their ball off the target to score points on the board. Highest score wins. Spring and Score also does great indoors during those pesky rain showers. Family travel will have kids on the move from now through Labor Day. And nothing combats the question, are we there yet? Better than our six magnetic travel games. Whether you're playing checkers, bingo, or tic-tac-toe, each set features magnetic playing pieces that stick to a metal game board. The board also doubles as a game case for easy storage. No more losing pieces between the seat cushions. It's not too early to stock back to school items. And a strong science offering starts with a 4M Kids Lab floor display. It features eight different award-winning STEM kits, all with accessible price points. For easy merchandising, the display stands nearly four and a half feet tall and is less than a foot wide. It holds 32 items and with its 50% profit margin, you're sure to dig it. Feeling fidgety? Many kids will when they head back to school. And that's why Toysmith Chubby Barnyard animals will become their best buddies. Available in pig, cow, and horse styles, these squishy, adorable little pets will ease the uncertainty of new teachers and classrooms. Back to school can also be an anxious time for adults. Our Hi There Spark line provides a humorous gift of encouragement. Need a relaxing beach day, but you're chained to a desk? Done. Need a fidget buddy who reminds you that even a bad day is redeemable with a good bathroom break? You're covered. Hi There Spark helps overcome the overwhelming, one playful moment at a time. Thanks, Kendra. Head over to toysmith.com to learn all the joyful ways you can order these top five items and so much more. And that's it for this edition of Toysmith Flutter. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next month. Happy selling. <laughs>